Hello, 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 procrast creators, and welcome back. So today we are making wood tags, y'all, and we are just going to show you some beautiful items. Look at that. You know you want that on your door. Come on. All right, to put this on your door, you need to cut your wood. This wood is a 12 in width, 16 in height. Um, from there, we put some stain on it. That is carbon gray is the color of that stain. And as you can see, I did the back and the front just so you can have a more finished look at the end of this process and then wiped off the excess. From there, I went to Cricut Design Space, selected the design that I want that was already pre-made and then um, chose premium vinyl. From there, I always click more just as a habit. Don't know if you necessarily need that. And then I sent it to my Cricut Maker. Um, from there, I allowed the machine to cut um, the uh, design out. Um, and you guys know I'm not going to show you the whole cutting process, but be assured that it did cut the whole design out. And from there... Um, you know, we go to our next process, which is then taking that design and weeding it. So as you can see right here, I am weeding the design. As you can see, I left it on the mat just because it's a little easier to um, pull off what you don't want while you have what you do want secured to something. So again, I'm pulling off all of the things that I don't want. So that includes all of the things inside of the letters. So from there, um, I am going to put that on some transfer paper after I pull it off of my mat. And notice that when I pull it off of the mat, I am pulling the mat away from the design. So you always want to make sure that you do that. If, um, and from there, like I said, we're getting that transfer um, paper ready. And I believe that transfer tape came from HTV Rant. Um, so I will put their information below, but as you can see, I just go from a corner and go all the way across and then to help secure it onto the, um, transfer pa paper, I go from, I, I scrape across the front as well as scrape across the back. I feel like you need to do both. Um, sometimes even when I do both, it gives me a little trouble. So you see, I had to go a little slow here and I think that's always good for people to see that, you know, things don't always come out the way that you want them to the first time and you just got to work with whatever happens. So as you can see, we finally got it off there and I did miss, um, a spot when I was, um, weeding off, weeding the design. And from there, once I feel like it is even and in place, then I am again using that scraping tool um, so that I can um, now put the design, adhere the design onto the um, board. And from there, I am going to seal it with some poly acrylic. And I'm doing that because I'm going to paint over this and that helps to seal in that design so that you, you can minimize the bleed when you're painting a sign. So that is why I use that at this particular point in the project. So from there, once that is dry and I let it completely dry, then I move on to adding my paint. Now you will notice that um, on this one, I believe I add two coats, but I did a couple the day that I did this. So what you're seeing and the end products that I did a few that you'll see at the end. So um, only one I did not do two coats on, but as a rule, I try to do at least two coats when I am doing the painting of my tags. Um, anything beyond that is like a little too thick. Um, and then you have to worry about the peeling off the tape, tape and it being thick, and then you're still pulling even with the poly acrylic, you can still have the um, possibility of pulling some of the paint where you don't want it to come off, off. But even though we're distressing this, you know, so that may not be a big issue to you if that's something that you're going to do if you're going to distress your sign. 
So from there, um, the next thing I'm going to do after I've painted however many coats is take that border of um, painter's tape off. So once I get the painter's tape off, um, as you can see, I got those nice crisp lines and you can see um, uh, I've already pulled off the design as well. So you can see the design is now in that white paint. And what I'm doing now is just going by um, going around it with my sandpaper. I've already kind of sanded the middle if you can take if you see that. So this is the one that only had the one coat of paint. Um, and I'm just distressing it to what I want it to look like. Um, and then I am taking my clean rag and kind of wiping off all of that dust because I don't want to keep all of that dust on the sign. So of course I'm going to wipe that off. So again, from here, then we're just adding our finishing touches. And as you can see, um, I got some cute little items. Um, there's a store down in the Chesapeake, Virginia area that does coastal living stuff. And I just loved her pieces. So I have a few of those um, that I'm going to add to this particular sign. But like I said, you're going to see that I did a couple of different designs um, and I will show all of those to you at the end. So I'm making my bow using a pipe cleaner. Um, and as you can see, I staple down that main piece and then I just put my bow um, stapling underneath the loops um, and then cutting off those edges to give it that finished look. Um, so I do that and then after that, I am going to hot glue my little sh um, starfish as well as I believe a shell and another starfish onto the bottom of that um, sign. So from there, once I have done all of that and I got it looking cute the way that I want, the last thing that I'm going to do, as you can see me doing now, is I'm going to screw in some eye screws and um, you can get those from your local hardware store. And as you can see, I just looped I doubled a piece of string, I looped it around one of them, and then I pulled it through the other and made a knot from there. I put a little hot glue um, right in the middle of that knot, and then I will knot it again um, so that that hot glue can dry in, um, in between the knot. And I had ran out of glue there, so that's why... Um, you see me had to, it took a little longer than I thought. So once I do that and pull it tight, the next thing I'm going to do is cut off any extras. And then here we are. Look how cute they all turned out. So if you are interested in buying one of these, you can always go to procrastcreation.com. That's where you will get the best deal. I do also have, um, an Etsy shop that is also under Procrast Creation. But like I said, if you want the best deal, meet me at procrastcreation.com and we will get what you need. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, below. And like always, please like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. We'll see you all the next time.